Hello, this is Lori with Lori Lynn Designs. I've been gone for a couple weeks. I have no excuse other than I was just gone for a couple weeks. But here I am back and we are starting all of our fall soaps. So we're doing pumpkins and cowboys and candy corn. Anyways, it makes sense to me. So today we are doing a pumpkin eggnog soap. We are using the fragrance from Nature's Garden, which is a perfect combination of pumpkin pie and eggnog. This fragrance is a magical combination of creamy vanilla custard, fresh pumpkin and apple, hints of cinnamon and clove with subtle base notes of cedar and musk. And yes, I was just reading that. So we are doing layers um, and this fragrance will discolor to a dark brown. So. We are doing fall colors, which is everything in the realm of brown. So we're just gonna go with it. So these colors that I chose, they can all go browner. Is that a word, browner? And it will be fine. It will be nice and happy and it will be a-okay. But in the traditional Lori Lynn Designs fashion, we like to put a little embed in there. And the pop of white is just gonna add a little interest. And also, since we're doing layers, I split my batter into two sections. And it's just easier to work with a soap and layers when you don't have to stress about the top layer turning into a brick in your pot while you're doing the third layer of six. So here's the second layer. I am measuring out my fragrance because I just have a bad history with pumpkin. Uh, Sometimes it's because I put actual pumpkin in it. Sometimes it's just these fragrances tend to accelerate. And the way around that is to just spatula that fragrance in, but also don't put too much. You know, sometimes we just want to eyeball it and go, hey, good enough. We measured it for the whole batch. Not today, my friends. I actually did it the scientific right way. And here's some more embeds. And you can see um, that batter is thickening up already and this video is four times the speed of life but even so it's thickening up pretty quickly in real time as well but that's okay because we're also doing sculpted choppy layer things so it's fine it doesn't matter so layer three Ooh, orange here we're doing orange, so. so I'm mixing that color in and then I'm adding the fragrance. And it'll be a lovely muted brownish orange burnt umber. Is that the right? I don't know. By the time it uh, cures in the soap. And it'll be happy and nice. So here we go. So uh, while we're watching this, I have a pumpkin story. So growing up, um, my mom liked to garden, so we gardened in the backyard and we had, gosh, a whole acre of land. So we had a very big garden in the backyard and we'd grow pumpkins and then we would carve pumpkins and we would carve, you know, the day or two before Halloween because we don't want our pumpkins to rot, right? Um, but I'm not sure why that mattered because then we would let them sit. Okay, after we burned, you know, the candle in there and got that nice toasted pumpkin smell, we'd let them sit around inside until they started to get a little squishy. And then we would have what is known as hurling day. This is when we take our pumpkins to the two-story balcony of the back of our house. We put it up on the balcony and we tip them over into the grass below of which we then let the pumpkin sit for another week or two to get super duper moldy, you know, black with fuzz. And then they went to the compost after mom was like, enough. And of course it was my dad's idea that we do the pumpkin hurling thing. And my mom just was like, Ugh, at least they're out of the house. So anyways, pumpkins, Halloween, hurling day. Now we live in a one story house. So there's no hurling. So there's hurling into like, the compost sometimes there's hurling into the chicken coop sometimes it's hurling into the garbage dumpster I don't know anyways we still have hurling 
but they're not nearly as gross as when I grew up. So there you go, new traditions, new traditions. <sighs> so the last layer, you've watched me uh, do that second batch and I cut out a lot of that because you didn't need to see it because you already know what's going on. And in this little cup is a mica drizzle. It's that Goldfinger um, mica. And it's just, I think this is olive oil. And, you know, stir it in there a little bit. It's really pretty. But I like to do a base layer because, you know, I'm an artist first. So I like to um, make the, boss, the bottom of my canvas interesting before I put my pumpkins on it. And those are my painstakingly made by hand pumpkins. And they're really not that hard. And uh, I should make a cute little video of that, post it later. But basically you roll a ball of orange in your hand and then you take a stick and you kind of make the lines. Um, and then you add a stem. So not, not hard, but it is something you have to spend your life doing. So yeah, you know. But I think the really cool part of this soap is not so much the layers, and not so much the, thank goodness I didn't screw up pumpkin soap because every year I do, because it's working and I like it. It's um, the soap frosting actually. So this is just extra from my batch. You probably wondered why she had two tubs of green, but I am prepping my um, piping bags here. So this is the, the leaf tip. I don't know what number it is, a Wilton something leaf tip. And then this one, I it gets blurry, but I'm just gonna cut off the smallest little tip so that I can have little viney things. So here I am showing you, <laughs> so blurry. Uh, just imagine in your mind, little, little tiny, little tiny. So here we go. All right, let's pump some vines and isn't it just amazing that there's just going to be a pumpkin on the top of every soap? That's not really true to life. But the mess of vines everywhere is very true to life. So we're just going for it. And this is like one of those what crazy quilt quilting things. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, that's what I was thinking. But there you go. Hey, sloppy is good. And then that leaf tip. Here we are with the leaves. And... I don't have any advice for the leaves other than go for it and stop when every bar has some in practice. I'm not saying this is good, but it looks okay to me and it's not my first time trying it. So uh, it's all good. And then I'm severely right-handed, so I need to always move my canvas so that I can uh, get all the leaves looking like they're all wonky and all like rotated and stuff but really I just I can only put them on one way very fun I'm liking this a lot all right so now the cut ooh pretty ah, ooh those layers so this slab I will cut it into five sections and I like how that um, side is definitely layers and they're definitely all unique, but I like the interest of not being completely straight. I, I was thinking like either have your layers super, super duper straight or just they like, don't even try. <laughs> Both look good. So here we are cutting it up and I, I kind of like it. Um, that mica drizzle I did on the top layers, so I think I skipped over that. Um, it gives it a little bit more shine in real life than on camera. You can't really see it. it looks like dirt in there, but um, it gives you that little shimmer. The holiday, I think like if it has shimmer in it, then it's holiday soap. Or maybe I just really like glitter. Either way, it works. And uh, maybe that those pumpkins are growing and the roots are really, really deep. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, I think it's fine. Um, the soap did darken up a little bit, but uh, not a big deal. I think it looks good and it smells really good. That uh, cinnamon and clove really came through and I've had a lot of people smell it and go, hmm, that smells good. So I've made lotion out of it. I've made scrubs out of it. I've made lotion bars out of it. I don't know. It, it's... It's a fun one. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. 
uh, subscribe to my channel if you so feel inclined to. I would love to have some more subs and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.